This episode and my trip to Earth 2019 was sponsored by Filament One. Make sure you check them out at filamentone.com for all your 3D printing needs, including 3D printers, filaments, resins, subscription boxes, accessories, and much more. Hello, makers. We are here at Earth 2019, and next to me is a very familiar face, Joe Prusha. Uh, we're also at the Prusha booth, of course, and we're next to the new original Prusha Mini. So we're here to find out a bit more about this little big machine. Um, so, what can you tell us about it? What made you go for a smaller form factor than a bigger i3? So the first idea why we created this printer was that we want to uh, provide people with something cheaper because we realized that 750 uh, what we charge for Mark 3S is not uh, palatable for everyone. So we started to work on making it more affordable. And then when we finished, we realized that it's also making a great secondary printer and it makes great printer for uh, print farms because we didn't use uh, like cheap, crappy parts. We are still using high quality parts and we manufacture as many as we can ourselves or in Czech Republic. So it also makes a great farm printer and it is also a great printer for classrooms. So there's so many use cases for this little machine. And what are the specifications? What's the build volume on the printer? So the build volume is 18 by 18 by 18 centimeters, which is uh, still fine for 90% of the prints you do. And I, obviously, one of the main questions I have is, you've moved away from the direct extruder, and you've gone to the Bowden setup, which is quite a ways from what we're usually seeing on a Prusa machine. Do you feel like you had to step out of the Prusa comfort zone, or how difficult do you think, um, or, or better yet, was it a challenge to do so? I mean, right now, it is, it is not that big of a problem, I would say, because uh, you have ways to deal with oozing and with the pressure in the extruder. And the bowden is pretty small, but you still can use linear advance. And if you set everything correctly, and we have, we basically have the control over the whole tool chain and all the hardware and the filaments and everything. So we can say pretty comfortably that it's not a drawback. So the next question is the hot end. Um, it's quite a nice profile. Uh, we know that that's not an E3D hotten, but it is E3D compatible. Okay. Is that designed in-house? Is it done purely for aesthetic reasons because it's cost-effective or design? So, I mean, if we if we are to go down with the price, one of the things is you can remove parts, so we remove the frame, but that is completely fine for this size. And uh, with light extruder, it, it prints just the same. But also, we need to use the parts for multiple purposes, not just one. So basically, the, uh, the hot end heat sink is now also part of the X carriage and makes the carriage uh, stiff. So that is uh, why we started to develop a custom thing for this particular printer. And also, as it is part of the X carriage, and you have the heat break, when you are screwing it in, you might end up having to, uh, if, if you tighten it, it could be like going sideways. So the heat sink uh, or the heat break is uh, secured differently. So that, that's how we ended up in that the explains. heat break. So then when we were working on, uh, working on cooling, uh, we wanted to have better airflow around it because we can cool from one side here. It is cooling as good as Mark III, so no worries about that. You, you have more of a blank, blanket right now because you can get more air under the nozzle. So that is how we ended up with custom heater block. So, so basically, the hot end is custom. Uh, next, you've, you've moved away from your 8-bit boards and now to a custom 32-bit board. How difficult was that to do and how happy are your developers? <laughs> So difficult, I mean, so the, the reason uh, for switching to 32-bit is not you get much higher print quality, it's more of a price concern because the 32-bit processors are cheaper, and but it is a good for the future developments because you have much uh, easier develop, 
it's much easier to develop for a better canvas to develop yes. other things. Yes, and we have uh, we have uh, how to say space for future future features. And I'm guessing at that at, at that stage, you're not too concerned about how much you can fit into the firmware and counting every bit and byte as you put as you put on uh, the blog yourself. Yeah, and also, I mean, we can we, we can use proper developer tools. I mean, we can use JTAG or ST-Link to debug the the firmware, and you don't have to like print uh, your d debug messages over the serial line. So that is that is very nice, uh, and it speeds up the firmware development pretty much. But we now have two firmware teams. One is for 32-bit, one is for 8-bit, because we still have plenty of features coming to our 8-bit firmwares. So Mark III is not going to get unsupported uh, soon. Yeah, we have two more firm, big firmware releases uh, prepared, and we are still asking people for the ideas what they want added. Now, you've also mentioned in your latest blog post that you are, in fact, working on a large format 3D printer, um, which is the 400 by 400 by 400 Core XY. Is there anything more you can say about that? And the better question is, you mentioned that just to put people's mind at rest that you're working on that, because usually you're quite secretive about projects, and rightly so, because you want to give that element of surprise. But was it to just tell the community, don't worry, we heard you, we're working on something bigger? Yeah, I think you got it right. I mean, because I've, a lot of people were asking for big printers, but <clears throat> we got a feeling that this is more needed just right now. And also, as we are not, um, as this is not as feature-packed as, uh, as our classic printers, for example, this doesn't support MMU and will not support MMU. So uh, this is the perfect uh, way to start the 32-bit generation of the boards. Yeah, but we wanted to give people peace of mind that we are working in fact on something bigger. So and sorry. that that is the target. We are not sure how big exactly it will be, but it will have a lot of nice features. So in terms of upgradability, this is a maker community. The first thing people are going to do, or a lot of people are going to do, they're going to get this printer, they're going to see how they're going to make it bigger. <laughs> How upgradable will this be, do you think, from a maker's perspective? So just, you know, enlarge the x-axis rods, you know, the bed? I mean, the safest bed if you want to make this bigger. And if you're, I don't suggest that because it's a lot of work, but it would be to make the y-axis longer. Yeah, because you are not affecting the rigidity of the, of the z and x-axis. But then, then it gives you a lot of problems because, uh, you would have to make your own sheets, you would have to make your own beds, you would have to make the, your own uh, y-axis planes. So it, it, it can be doable, but... But I mean at that price point, I, a lot of people will go, nowadays people will go for a much cheaper printer and they still spend an extra 100, 150 to make it as good as it can possibly be. So then you have this at the right price point, which is just there. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there is a lot of uh, weird reasoning with, with some of the, some of the people outside of our community. I mean, just recently I saw people recommending someone who is one, who just wants to print to get the worst printer because they can learn more, but they don't realize people just want to print. So this, this is, this is like, I would say the best first time printer you can get if you want to just print. If you, if you want to have your hobby of modding 3D printers, that is a different thing. Yeah, because you, there, there's not much more you can add to a machine like this, which makes sense. But if you, if you want to learn about 3D printing and you don't care about 3D printing itself, just get the, just get, <laughs> just, just, just get the machine which you need to fix so you can actually print, right? And one last question for you. I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, delivery date is expected end of November. Um, how confident are you realistically that you will be able to meet that deadline? So we are starting shipping in late November. So it is something different. We are not, it, it's not possible to ship all the orders because we have a lot. Uh, in late November, but we are starting shipping. And we are 
very confident we can do it because we are stocked up on parts already and the manufacturing is being prepared and uh, wider and wider testing is being, being done right now. So we plan to have uh, some outside beta testers too just to confirm that everything is working. But yeah, as you can see, the machines look pretty, pretty done. Well, okay, well, thank you very much. Once again, thank you from on behalf of the community for producing something else that we can look forward to. I ordered mine yesterday, of course. Um, so I'll be looking forward to an end of November delivery date since I was one of the first ones to order it. <laughs> thank you very much, Joe, once again. Thank you. And good luck.